Uh, just want to add some thoughts to the to, to the, uh, the speaker. Uh, Sweet, you're right. Um, Sweet is a problem if you're going to try and find a training facility in Sweden. It is very difficult or very expensive, and even if there was a bit of land, I don't think the neighbors would like it very much if you start putting floodlights into their bedrooms. Um, so that exists, but there is nothing, in my opinion, to have a club in Sweden, a premises, fixed premises in Sweden, and then a training, and then a training area uh, somewhere else. I think that that should be um, the way forward. I think you need to have established a premises, one or two rules, go for more, see what you can get, to have a base in Sweden. Where you train is another matter, because it's going to be much easier for you to find a training center outside uh, than it is. Um, I was reminded while the latest speaker was talking about how St. Andrews actually came about, St. Andrews Football Club, and for those who don't know, I can tell you exactly what happened. Um, you mentioned Aradut. In my days, when I was young, Aradut was like the, Aradut was the, the place to be. Anke, the Surbrigudu, when you have to come to Aradut, which the Tanta Shemara. So, okay. <laughs> In fact, I don't know if ever of you heard of the league called GIDA. Have you heard of the league GIDA? You know what the league GIDA means? Aridut Association. GIDA is Aridut Association. In Aridut, a lot of clickek, you know, you put your Aridut. So, uh, it looks like one of the bus stops, for example. You know, Ranky and went back. And eventually, we organized ourselves and we thought the best way to, to vent all this pent up rivalry is to form a league and play football. And when uh, St. Andrews decided, probably like Melita had done before, yeah, they were all based from Slima. In fact, Slima actually once had a Slima Sports Association. Slima was so big sport-wise that they actually had an association to cater for all the different sections of Slima. And I'm sure some of, uh, a lot of you remember, it, remember that very well. When St. Andrews decided, actually St. Andrews, what did St. Andrews was Luxor, a group of kids who got together and started a football team and a basketball team. 1968, a bunch of school leaving kids. And uh, when Luxor decided to enter, to apply to the Malta Football Association as to enter as a team, the Malta Football Association said, as it would quite rightly do, that you cannot have more than one team from one locality. So next to Slema, there was St. Julian's, but Melita were registered under St. Julian's, because Melita are actually registered as being the team uh, representing St. Julius. So then we have to look up beyond St. Julius. And we, I remember considering a few options. Among which there was Palcha, which sounded more like a water polo club, it just didn't sound good. Parcheville in those days, Parcheville wasn't what it is today, but again, Parcheville somehow didn't sound right. And Sui was just emerging in those days. Sui was just like building were coming up. But there was a name which we thought was sexier, it was St. Andrews. In fact, Sweeney was originally called, referred to as St. Andrews. St. Andrews now, believe it or not, doesn't exist anymore as a, as a council. The, the irony is that we chose St. Andrews, we were accepted as St. Andrews, yes, I can confirm. Luxor Sports Club moved out of Slima, and they needed a locality to represent, them. they needed to represent a locality in order to be able to get into the MFA, because as anything to do with Slima, they were all Slima based, they could not have joined. And eventually we chose St. Andrews. The irony is that eventually St. Andrews was, was replaced by Pembroke. So theoretically St. Andrews, the football club, doesn't exist. And St. Andrews is now more associated with Sweden. And that's a bigger challenge for you. As you know, so are very well established because they've been there for 40 years. And a lot of the children, which you probably are Swedish kids, they go to St. Andrews or to Melita. So my advice to you, because like I said, I am all in favor of people who have the energy and the drive to try and do something. It is not easy because in the locality where you are representing, there is already a strong presence of two clubs. So you have to think out of the box, you have to go beyond. We spoke recently of your possible association with Stella Mares, and possibly the idea of having a training center there. That's where it begins. It begins with the kids. The kids will bring the parents, the parents will bring the members, and one final thing regarding marketing, which was not mentioned, the MFA is encouraging very much. One of the sources of income which has never been considered, but you have to put it in your cash flows, is gate money. And 
gate money can only come if you convince 50 people. I don't agree that the membership should be 5 euros or 10 euros. I think a membership should be combined to a season ticket, which is something we're going to look into. But if a guy wants to become a member, the least he can do is pay to come and watch you play your 10 home games or something like that. But it is something which we are working in the future. Another term is try and bring, try and bring up support. A lot of you are students, I'm sure you have groups and you know, whatever, so try and bring support because gate money can translate into another sponsor. If both teams get 50, 50, 50 support, there's 50 paying support, as I think it's for four or five euros for the third division, I'm not sure, that can bring in 500 euros in a game. Simply by having 50 people, is it, is it possible for Sweden to have 50 people come and watch them? 50. Because you begin with that. Make sure that you get people because the MFA today is committed to providing the stadiums for free, paying for the referees, doing everything we can to give the clubs the opportunity to make gate money one of the sources of income, as it should be. In the past, this has never been done. So now the MFA is absorbing everybody's expenses and telling you every guy you bring, you will, get, you will take his share money, you will take, take his gate money. So it is another thing which I think the club could uh, think about to try and focus on bringing supporters to watch your home games.